What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today's video is sponsored by Jack Factory. I specifically am including a link in the description to their pre-workout. And yes, this is the video after I said I don't take pre-workout. But I can honestly say this is the best taste of pre-workout I've ever had in my life. This is specifically the cotton candy flavor. Now I haven't tried any other flavor, so I'm only speaking on what I know and I can't recommend anything outside of that. Like I said, I have never had a pre-workout taste this good. And honestly, it is so good to where I'm going to just not take Monster, not take Diet Coke, and still keep coffee at around a 60-40, maybe 70-30 ratio, which again, I still recommend everyone for health benefits to do. But discount code is Johnny if you want to try it. And if it's below a 5 out of 10 in taste, come back to this video, leave it a dislike, and then unsubscribe. Are you leaving a dislike right now? No, stop. No, you have to try it first. Anyways, where's Sean? Wait, three, two, one. The goal here is to make the best tutorial online for hook grip, flat out. So if you have a friend who's interested in learning hook grip, please share this video with them. We have Sean Noriega, who is a special lifter because he both pulled 728 pounds in competition at 183 pounds body weight, which is actually over the current IPF world record. And the unique thing about him, which we will talk about later in this video, is he has the quickest setup in the world in the IPF. He sets his hook grip very quickly and then pulls right away. So that's something that is very unique and we'll get to that. So my goal in today's video is to talk about some of the biggest mistakes I think people make when setting the hook grip so that I can provide you guys with a much more efficient way to set up where I think a lot of the common problems that people have with hook grip will just be totally alleviated. So we're going to talk about what I believe to be the best way to set up hook grip as well as programming and training considerations to make sure that it's sustainable down the road. All right, let's get it. So what I believe to be the biggest mistake that people make with hook grip is that they dig it far too deeply into the thumb. Nope. Yep. Now, the two reasons I think this is a problem is that it is infinitely more painful to grip this way and probably is less reliable. Now, the reason it's less reliable is that you are still going to have the issue of the bar rolling. And I'm sure for many of you who have tried hook grip, you've dealt with thumbs tearing, you've felt, dealt with it being painful, and you've dealt with the bar feeling like it's rolling that thumb skin off. So the way that we can avoid this is to let the bar sit much lower in the thumb. And in fact, I think this is gonna be a far more effective strategy because the bar is not given the opportunity to roll if it's sitting in the lowest point in the hand. Now, a really common way that people are going to set up their hook grip is they think, okay, I'm pulling hook grip, this means I'm getting more security. So if I'm trying to get more security, I really try to focus on digging it into the thumb. Now, what happens is, if the bar is not sitting at the lowest point in the hand, sure, I have that extra level of security with the finger going over the thumb, but the bar at some point will start to roll. And if it starts to roll, it's really hard to stop that. Your grip is probably not strong enough to do so. So when most people are setting up like this, they're more likely to see that point of failure. Now, what I'm going to recommend people to do is think about letting the bar sit much lower in the thumb. And if I look at it where I'm grabbing the bar and letting it sit lower in the thumb, if I drew a line through the center of mass of the bar down, it is directly over that junction. So there really is no place for the bar to roll if it is sitting directly over that junction point. I will be able to just solely rely on my grip strength to hold onto the bar, along of course with the security of the, of the middle finger over the thumb. So there's no concern about rolling if it is sitting much lower in the hand. Also, it's not as painful, so you don't have to worry about ripping your thumbs as often if you are gripping much lower in the thumb. So if you're watching this video and trying to learn hook grip, it's probably because you are worried about the reliability of your grip. Now, I'm going to give what I believe to be a counterintuitive tip here with increasing the security of the hook grip, which is to not squeeze as hard as you can. It's pretty counterintuitive to think that the less hard that you squeeze setting up the hook grip, the more reliable it will be. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, the reason that I mention this goes along with what we were saying in point number one, which is that we want the bar to sit in the lowest part of their hand. So it's kind of a two-part approach here where we want to think about gripping the bar a lot less aggressively with a lot less force from our forearms. And then also we want to think about pulling ourselves away from our arms. So the reason that we do this is if you guys watch me set up here, is that if I 
focus on gripping less aggressively and then pull myself away, what ends up happening is when I pull myself away with a soft grip, the bar will naturally slide down to the lowest part of my hand because I'm not giving resistance to keep the bar in that one place. So if I'm setting up here and I grip softly and then pull my body away from the bar, it settles into that lowest point before the bar breaks the ground. I'm sure many of you pulling hook grip have experienced the feeling where you break the floor and that's immediately when you start to feel that bar rolling down your thumbs. If I can get rid of that point before I initiate the pull, then I completely avoid the thumb ripping feeling because now the bar is on the ground rolling versus being in the air rolling. And I settle it into that exact point in the hand where I want it to be. So I'm thinking about a very loose grip where I go down to the bar, not even really trying to squeeze that hard, and then I pull myself away with my torso, and now the bar is sitting in the lowest part of my thumbs now. So yeah, one of the things that Sean's saying that I think can be taken for granted is how hanging it low in the thumb is different from squeezing it hard. So you can still hang it low in the thumb and still try to squeeze it super, super hard, and then you're still doing it incorrectly. Because in my experience, you know, leading up to today, when Sean really helped me, I actually literally nearly missed 405, just trying to do it, hanging it low in the thumb, but I just couldn't hold on to it. So then it slipped out, and like honestly, I, I thought that was gonna be the day. But then with 455, it moved very well, and I was in total control of it. Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest things with this is that, like I said, people are afraid of missing on grip, which is probably why you're doing hook grip, but reflexively, all the muscles in your forearms are going to flex when there's weight in your hands and you try to initiate a pull. Like that is going to happen and you have to trust that your musculature is, is, is going to, to activate, it's going to flex. Like that is not a real concern here. Whereas, like I said, the efficiency of hook grip really comes from the fact that you eliminate any rolling, right? That comes with digging the bar up higher in your hand on mixed grip or hook grip incorrectly. So if you are soft with your grip and soft with your hands, once you initiate the pull, you're gonna, your hands and your forearms are going to flex as much as they really need to. So that's, that I think is the most important thing, to really trust that you do have the minimum required grip strength in order to pull hook grip. Yeah, so for me personally, I would say what resonates with me the most is to hang it low in the thumbs, shift it, push it away, and even then after that, let it dangle. Like that to me is what resonates, because otherwise I could get in exactly that position and still choke it and then that just doesn't work. It can sound like everybody's giving the same advice when it comes to hook grip, but there are meaningful differences. For example, Kabuki Strength recommends that you do grip the bar low in the hand, but then they recommend that you grip it very tightly, including the pinky. If you switch over to Sean's style of gripping very loosely throughout the entire movement, in my opinion, it can be an absolute game changer. So as Johnny mentioned, I am the fastest deadlifter in terms of setting up hook grip. Damn, that's so quick. And the two things that allow me to do that are one, being really relaxed with my arms and hands, as I mentioned, not squeezing the bar, and orienting my shoulders more internally as that allows me to get much more of my thumb on the bar and put me in the position that I need to be in. So what I'm gonna show you guys is an example here of me going down to grab the bar with a much more neutral shoulder position. You'll notice if I grab the bar this way, the underside of my thumb is not touching the bar, right? It's more of the, the inside side of my thumb. So what happens is if I internally rotate my shoulder as I go down to grab the bar, and I'll get in my stance right now, is that if I internally rotate the shoulders, now that underside portion of my thumb is the first thing to make contact with the bar. So now I'm getting the most efficiency out of my thumb because now I don't have to try to wrap the thumb and consequently get it much deeper in the thumb to set the hook grip. Now what I do is if I'm internally rotated, I can have the tip of my thumb on the bar and it's the whole underside. Just think internal rotation, get the middle finger around the thumb, and that's really all you're going to need, right? And that simplicity of it, of just naturally exposing that bottom part of the thumb to the bar, it allows me to not really think. Where I just set my stance, I'm able to internally rotate, my hands end up where they need to be, and that's it. 
And that brings me to my next point, which is that I think it's honestly a detriment for a lot of people to spend too much time at the bottom. Because what happens is, if you spend a lot more time at the bottom trying to set it up, one, a confounding variable could be that the more time you spend down there, the more time you spend trying to squeeze. Because I think a big problem people have with hook grip is that they spend time at the bottom double checking and reassuring that it's secure. You know, you see a ton of people setting up and they're like, okay, let me give it a tug. All right, it's staying secure. All right, let me give it another tug. Let me make sure it's secure. And then at that point, it's like, I'm just squeezing and squeezing and squeezing to the point where once I initiate, it's probably going to roll again. And you would never really know that giving it those test pulls because it's never leaving the ground during that point. Another point about spending too much time on the ground is that it can negatively affect your positioning where especially with the sumo deadlift where so much of like that flowing through the bar is so important and maintaining leg tension eventually it's just not going to be feasible to spend all this time down there and still be pushing through the legs so if you're spending ex excess time setting up your hook grip you could end up losing tension in the legs or just putting yourself in a completely different position than how you would actually like to pull now actually i do want to ask you if this is a fair um, conclusion to what you're saying because when I'm putting this into practice what helps for me is to think to set up and I think about the dangling part first yeah that's the primary thought then I still think about pushing away because I know for myself I still always dig a little too deep and then I try to push it away and then what helps me as the next thought is just to keep the elbows out yeah and then that's it yeah and that's fine so dangle push away elbows out and if, if I don't have that just simple three checklists, what I find is, is you hear you're not supposed to you know, push really hard into the bar, and then you still try to over tighten the lats just independently of the bar. Yeah. That's the thing that was very unintuitive to me, is to go down with that inter internal rotation, elbows out, and then just keep that. Yeah. And that's fine. This advice contrasts against a popular video made by Omar Isaf. So we're in a good position. I feel my thumbs like meaty on it. I got all three other fingers on it. From here, we're gonna externally rotate. So now we're set up in position. Everything feels nice and tight. Honestly, my thumbs feel great. Bar's in the meaty part of my palm. The last channel I wanna mention is Calgary Barbell. Sean and I both agreed that Bryce does a better job than anybody else online when it comes to hook grip videos. He mentions to push the bar away, to have the pinkies very loosely on the bar at lockout, there's only one stylistic difference between Sean and Bryce is that Bryce emphasizes having the thumb across the bar, but doesn't explicitly emphasize internal rotation at the shoulder joint and keep it there for a quick setup. He moves a little bit as far as rotation at the shoulder, uh, like we said, and then gets into a similar position. For me, Sean's style has been uniquely effective. So my next tip and trade secret is going to help your hook grip immensely, but I think in general is just a great tip for grip strength which is how you use chalk and what kind of chalk you use. So one of the things that I like to use is liquid chalk. And I use liquid chalk in conjunction with regular chalk. Now, the reason for this is that liquid chalk oftentimes has some sort of alcohol in it that is going to dry out your hands. Now think you train at a gym where a lot of people deadlift on the same bar, the oils in your hands or skin get on it, or maybe it's humid in the gym where the bar gets a little bit wet. Liquid chalk is going to allow your hands to dry out because of the alcohol, and then you can apply regular chalk over that. Like literally the meat that I just competed in, my hands were tearing from a previous tear that happened during prep, and my second attempt ripped them significantly badly to the point where I thought it was a crapshoot on whether or not I was going to get my third, but I went to the bathroom, washed my hands, applied liquid chalk, and then applied regular chalk and it felt like I could hold my third attempt forever. So I think that that's actually just like a very specific little thing that could be a total game changer for those of you who feel like, you know, even if you do set up your hook grip correctly, that either the conditions of the bar or where you're training are just so bad that they're going to make grip feel like it's gonna slip. So Sean, I hear what you're saying and I wanna do my three sets of 10, should I just do all of my bro volume work with hook grip? My hands are hurting me. Um, if they feel like they're on fire, my life has gone downhill, I now have alcoholism and depression. What can I do to alleviate this? So this is one of the biggest questions that I do get asked about hook grip. I don't necessarily think that you should train hook grip on every rep range. Now, the reason for this is that hook grip is going to hold based on technique and it's going to be load dependent. So muscular fatigue is probably not going to be a factor here. 
Now, for those of you who are thinking, okay, maybe I should hook grip my fives, maybe I should hook grip my tens, maybe I should just hook grip everything to build a tolerance, I would much rather just see you pull your singles hook grip or make programming changes where you're pulling multiple singles as a way to practice getting better at hook grip. Now, the reason that I think that while you could hook grip everything, that it is not the best strategy is that muscular fatigue does become a factor when it comes to high rep sets in the same way that it would be with any other grip you're taking. Now, if you're doing a set of eight, a set of 10 hook grip, your forearms are probably going to start to fatigue. And just as we would with holding something normally, the response to feeling like grip is starting to slip is to squeeze harder. But as we just mentioned, with getting the bar to dangle low in the hand and really have that truly secure hook grip, one key factor is going to be not squeezing as hard as you can. So if you're reinforcing the pattern of squeezing harder that's produced from having to hold onto the bar for a high rep set, that bad habit might actually transfer over into pulling your singles hook grip. I only hook grip my top singles. Even if I'm programmed to top double, I do use straps. So what I try to do when I do pull with straps is I try to mimic my setup as much as possible. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that same feeling of pulling myself away from the bar and letting it dangle. While I'm still taking a full grip with the hands, because I do think that's a problem when people pull with straps and really let it hang out of their hands. While I'm still taking a full grip, I am trying to mimic that feeling of it hanging lower in the hand and then flow through it in the same way that I would top down because obviously I don't want my technique to deviate so much with straps that I end up being way weaker or the movement is just different leverage wise. So the last point that I want to make kind of goes along with what I was saying before and it's that building up a tolerance to hook grip is kind of an overrated concept to me. Now, you do need to build up a tolerance for your own mental state in terms of the pain. Everything. <laughs> when it comes to the physical tolerance building up, I don't really think that this is something that's necessary if you are implementing all of the hook grip cues that we mentioned correctly. Because one of the things that people talk about, like with setting, you know, building a tolerance with how you pull normally, is like you getting, you getting the calluses. Now, I've never really experienced building crazy calluses on my thumbs, and that's because the bar is never sitting high enough in the thumb such that I'm you know, ripping down the thumb and the bar, via the bar rolling, and I'm not building up calluses because that doesn't happen. So I think that if you are setting hook grip properly, it's going to feel more secure. You're probably not going to run into that rolling and subsequently callus buildup from that. So I don't really see a, a physical need to go overkill on the number of reps you hook grip and rather the quality is the most important part of it. Like, are you hook gripping singles? Are you hook gripping heavyweight? Is it specific to your goal? And do you know that, okay, when, I, when it comes time to load a third attempt, is this gonna stay secure? I'd like to thank Sean for coming on the channel. I'll include a link in the description to his channel. He's a very knowledgeable technical powerlifter and coach as well. And I would like to reiterate that there are a lot of great videos out there on the hook grip. A lot of fantastic channels have addressed this, but we've really looked at their videos and they've addressed certain points, but not really comprehensively the entire thing. And I want to emphasize the two genuinely unique points are the internal rotation of the shoulder in keeping that internally rotated. That was an absolute game changer for myself today. And then the second point is the liquid chalk. I just have never heard anybody make the point of layering that before regular chalk. Yeah. Do so you have anything you want to add? No, I mean, I just, I'm really happy that I was able to address a lot of the common mistakes that people make. And I just hope that this video helps you mm -hmm. have a really sustainable and successful hook grip when deadlifting and yeah. you're able to deadlift more weight. Yeah. So hopefully this taught you guys the basics and a few advanced things that, you know, Someone like myself, I didn't learn until talking to Sean in person. And I, I'm confident I'm going to continue to learn as we spend a few more sessions together. And hopefully I'll be able to pull maybe, maybe 720 or something on the platform someday. We'll see. So make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching, guys. Peace. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who comes short again and again. 475 on the bar, Texas Strange System, Hook Grip Master Race, we're in here. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. That felt like a 
This guy's got potential.